The fight is brought to you for Riyadh season by the NEC, the General Entertainment Authority, Eddie Hearn's Matchroom Boxing, Frank Warren's Queensbury Promotions, Spencer Brown's Gold Star Promotions, AJ Boxing and Seller in association with Salita Promotions. Let's bring in Dimitri Salita. Uh, Otto Valin, your man, is in a tremendous position right now in the rankings. Uh, and he's got this chance now again against Anthony Joshua here. Tell us what you're thinking about this fight. Well, Otto Whalen has shown his world-class ability versus his incredible fight with Tyson Fury. He stayed busy. He's been working with his excellent trainer, one of the best teachers in the game, Joey Gamash, perfecting his craft and coming off his last win against uh, Murad Gassi, which was very impressive. I believe that Otto has the skills, the confidence uh, to, to, uh, to win this big fight. Thank you, Dimitri. Let's bring in Eddie Hearn here, Anthony Joshua's promoter. Eddie, you have been with Anthony every step of the way. And now the next fight is against a, a southpaw who's coming off a, a great win. How, how are you feeling about this one? I think it's a, it's a very tough fight. I think it's a great fight. Hello to Dimitri, who, you know, fighters should know, like Otto Wall and Dimitri Salita has been trying to land this fight for years against Anthony Joshua. After every fight that AJ's had, Dimitri phones me. What about Otto Wallen? You know, we saw him in a great fight with Tyson Fury. I think and not a lot of people know even about his victory on the road against Gassiev in Russia just a few weeks ago. It was a massive win for him. We respect him. He's well schooled. He's six foot six. He's a, he's a good southpaw, but we see something different from AJ now. You know, I think the plan at the start of this year was to box three times when he was unified world heavyweight champion. The, the politics, the mandatories led to a lot of inactivity. He boxed in April, he boxed in August. And now he boxes in December. I think, you know, and I'm, I'm definitely biased, but I believe that there's the best chapter to write yet in the story of Anthony Joshua. You know, what he's given to this sport. He sold out arenas at Wembley Stadium, Millennium Stadium, Madison Square Gardens, Riyadh before. This is his third fight in Saudi Arabia. He's changed the complete face of boxing. And it's a pleasure to go back. And, and you know, when we had the approach from his Excellency, to bring Anthony Joshua to Saudi Arabia. It was a fight and a challenge that he wants to take. He wants to become world heavyweight champion again. I believe he can do it. And I think you're going to see a destructive performance from him. And uh, I like what I see up here at the press conference. You know, no games, no mucking around. Business on December 23rd, move forward. We know there's another great heavyweight there in Deontay Wilder. That's a massive fight to potentially bring to Saudi Arabia in 2024. Philip Hergovic down there, the IBF number one. Otto Wilde in his IBF number two. This lines up everything for Anthony Joshua, one of the biggest fights of his career. And as I said, the, the greatest chapter in the story of Anthony Joshua yet to write. And I can't wait to see him shine on December 23rd. Thank you very much, Eddie Hearn. Let's bring in Otto Valin here. I mean, Otto, as Eddie mentioned there, you've got that win over Morat Gassiev, which maybe went under the radar a bit, but it was a tremendous win. Uh, your tail must be high right now. You must have all the confidence in the world heading into this fight. Yeah, I want to say thank you to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia for putting on this show. It's really unbelievable what they've done in one week with all these fighters. This is a huge event, and I'm so happy to be part of it. So thank you very much, and thanks to Queensbury and Frank Warren that we dealt with. We got the call one week ago, my manager Jolene and I, we spoke about this fight. We thought it made sense. We went back and forth with Joshua's side. We came to a conclusion in two days, maybe. And so it was an easy fight to make for us. And I'm so happy. I just come in off the great win with Gassiev. It was uh, five, six weeks ago now. I did not expect to fight once more this year, but this is really amazing. I'm coming off of that win. I'm in a great position. I'm a promotional free agent. I'm ranked number two with the IBF. So I'm really on top of the world getting this fight. I'm so ready for it. I've been waiting for it for a long time. And I'm just so happy and blessed to be in this position. You've boxed before in the amateurs. Anthony Joshua won that fight. You've sparred countless rounds as well. Can you take anything away from what you already learned about Anthony Joshua? Well, I think we both have a good idea of each other. I think that I fought him when I first started boxing, pretty much. I didn't have many fights. He didn't have many fights. We fought. I lost a close decision. We fought again a couple years after England versus Sweden. He won a close decision again. Then we sparred in 2016 before he fought Charles Martin. And I think, honestly, Joshua, he was on his way up. He was... He's a very good fighter. He was a very good fighter at that time also. And, you know, 
I pretty much feel like he had his peak maybe around 2018. Uh, Joshua, he deserves a lot of respect. He's done a lot for himself. He comes from humble beginnings that really conquered the division for some time. But now I feel like he's on his way down, on his way out, and I'm going to help him with that, and I'm going to win this fight. All right, well, let's bring in former two-time unified world heavyweight champion, Anthony Joshua. Anthony, you are an iconic knight, a historic knight. You're no stranger to these sorts of nights. Tell us your feelings heading into this one. Why isn't Eddie asking me questions? You're my promoter. Feel Eddie, would me. you like to ask course, Anthony a question? Um, thank you. AJ, a massive <laughs> moment for you. Six weeks what out. You? Yeah. People talking about you've peaked. People talking about this might be... People talking about our peaked have never even seen what a peak looks like in their whole career. So I don't know what they're talking about, number one. Secondly, I want to thank... His Highness Turkey and the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia for putting a phenomenal card together. And um, I'm looking forward to delivering my message to Otto Wallin on December 23rd. Obviously, this time around, short notice, three fights in one year. That was the plan when we set yeah. off for 2023. Yeah. You're going to deliver that, and it could lead to a huge 2024. But everybody talking about future fights, just purely focused on Otto Wallin December 23rd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't predict the future, but... I know where I want to go, I know what I want to do, and I'm sticking to that plan. I set our plan at the start of this year, and I'm sticking to that. I'm a man of my word. I stand firm on what I believe, and I believe I'm going to be three-time heavyweight champion of the world. And my first stop to that in getting in the rankings is putting on a demolishing job against Otto Wallen. And finally, sorry, Dev. Finally, <laughs> crack on. <laughs> your third fight in Saudi Arabia, back to Riyadh. I know every time you've been, it's been an incredible Phenomenal. experience. Incredible Riyadh season we yeah. saw a breathtaking production, an event with Fury against Ngannou. Yeah. Excited to get back to the kingdom. 100%. When my family heard we was going back to Saudi, phones started ringing off. When can we get tickets? When can we book flights? They get treated real nice when they go there. I'm focused on my fight, of course, but my whole family, my community is going to be out there. There's going to be a hundred of us strong, and um, it's going to be a really good time to be in Saudi Arabia. So if this is the first time you're hearing it, make sure you get booked up to head out to Saudi Arabia, December 23rd. It's going to be big, and I don't think we've ever seen a card like this before. And just definitely, finally, when we sat down in that meeting with His Excellency, just on Monday night, the vision that we saw, the passion that we saw for boxing, something that we all share. 100%. So this isn't a one-stop shop. This is what I like about the vision is that there's a map, a road map with checkpoints, and I can't wait to get to the final destination. So as I said, this is my first stop. And um, December 23rd, I'll deliver that message and I'll be on my way again onto the next bigger and better opportunity in 2024. I'm fully focused on this fight. I'm determined to win, and I'm determined to get back to my peak, if that's what they want to call it. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you, Eddie. I think all those questions I had written down here anyway, Eddie, so I think, I think we're good. I think we covered it. But tell us your thoughts. Look, Daniel needs a fight. He needs a tough fight. He's got to go out there and show everybody what he's about. You know, he, he was that much away from becoming world champion. You know, I'm not going all to the controversy again, but he, you know he can punch. And there's been some doubters out there. We believe in him. He believes in himself. So he's got to get out there now and show what he's all about. He's a young man. And this is, you know, at the end of the day, you know, I'm with the greatest respect to all you fellas. You, you know, a lot of them are getting older. He's a young guy. He's got a big, he's got a big, big opportunity here to, to, to on this stage, to show that he can do it and what he's all about. And I've got faith in him to do it. And obviously you're going to speak to him yourself and ask him, but he cannot afford now to slip up. This is, this is it. This is, a, this is a big moment in time. And we're going to find out what Daniel Dubois is all about. Thank you, Frank. Well, let's bring in Jarrell Big Baby Miller. Um, we are going to find out what Daniel Dubois is all about on December 23rd. Are we going to find out what you're all about? First of all, I want to say, uh, you know, we got to wake this crowd up. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Um, thank you, Brother Turkey, for putting on this event. Frank Warren, George, for uh, working diligently behind the scene and making it happen. Brother Spencer Brown for really putting this together. And um, thank you, Daniel Dubois, for being the dummy to sign the contract because I'm going to beat your ass. Um, listen, man, proof is in the pudding. When I, I talk that shit, but I back it up every time. So. Was it kickboxing or boxing? I'm going in there and I'm gonna rip his head off. You know, it's the same we have in New York. I mean, if you don't like Vogue, let's cover your ear. 
we smell bitch in him. And once the bitch is in you, it ain't going nowhere. He quit against Joy Joyce. He got beat up and knocked out by a jab by Usek, and those are small guys. I mean, Joyce is big, but he ain't big baby big. So I'm telling you something, when you find a mean guy like me that's throwing 80 punches around, got a good chin, don't quit, come forward, I'm kicking his ass, and I'm sending him to early retirement, plain and simple. Okay, well, let's... Uh, Ask let's your actually, mama, too. Let's actually bring in uh, Daniel Dubois here. Daniel, you've just heard a lot of comments there. He says he's going to kick your ass. Uh, he's talked about doing all sorts of things to you on December 23rd. How does that sound? Excited for it. You know, this is it. Big time boxing, baby. I want to chop that tree down, and that's, that's what I'm planning to do. Uh, Jarrell, what do you think of Daniel Dubois? If shit had a twin, it'd be his face. It's plain and simple. I mean, listen, bro. I, like I said before, we could talk the talk and walk the walk. I talk and I back it up. Like I said, I think the his new trainer put the battery in his back, try to motivate him to get in there with the likes of me. You know what I mean? He was scared to fight Joseph Parker. I heard Joseph Parker move too much for him, so he don't want to chase him around. So he thought because I'm inactive, he's going to fight a big guy like me. But I come forward, and I'm just mean, hungry. And like I said before, there's nothing he's going to do to me that's going to bother me. I'm going to hit him with everything in the kitchen sink, and I'm going to send him back to his training, and I'm going to tell him, I told you so. So listen, plain and simple, come December 21st, I'm going to kick your stuttery ass. Watch. Uh, Daniel, any response to that? That's Bring it on. <laughs> Bring it on. Bring it on. I'm Bring ready for it. Kitchen. I'm motivated for this fight, and you know, after that fight and the emotions that that fight stirred up in me, I'm up for it, and I want to really go go to You're going to make him play? One. Hey? You're making pay for it? Oh, yeah. Good. <laughs> Good. That's what we want. His promoter got to hype him up because he over there. He's stealing a bag of chips over there, boy. <laughs> Listen, man, I'll tell you right now, man, I'm going to fry your ass. Anybody, once I kick his behind, I'm going to buy everybody fish and chips in here. Bet my word on that. And, Frank, we're going to talk long term. Don't worry after I cook your boy. I feel bad for you for putting that money behind that dude. It's a wrap. We will see. Jerome, I've just got one more for you because you have a kind of hostility with a, a number of heavyweights. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen recent things with Deontay Wilder. Of course, you were scheduled at one point to fight Anthony Joshua. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything to say to anyone else up here? Oh, they can all kiss my black ass, Deontay and AJ. I don't like none of them motherfuckers, you know what I'm trying to say? But one thing I can tell you is that after I finish with du Dubois, I definitely want Manuel Chark because he got that belt. Them dudes got losses and there ain't nothing over there with the, for them belts right now. But i tell you one thing, though. We all I know for a fact that AJ don't want no smoke with Deontay. Shut the fuck up. And even though... Don't start with even, me, you know. Even though... Yeah. Listen, Miller, don't start with me. Even though... You know, I'll come over there and listen, slap you, and I see you brought your mum here I again. I kick your ass last I time. I see you brought your mum here again, because you need a rampage. Boy, shut up. You're don't not built like that. that. But like I was saying, we all know that Fucking AJ don't want clown. no smoke with Deontay. As, as much as I don't like Deontay, I know Deontay will put that motherfucker in the grave. So let's make... I'll make it easy for you. Either you can fight Deontay and go to the grave, or fight me and go to the hospital. Either way, you can get your ass whooped. So pick your poison. So let's stop all that talking. Take Eddie Hearn thumb out your ass and pick somebody that really can fight. Either me or Deontay, one of us Americans, whoop your ass. So stop running over your English you, muffin. You are not doing listen, nothing. Bro, to me. Listen, bro, listen, bro. You softening baby shit. You are not shit. doing nothing to me. Watch your you, mouth. You let my little cousin Miller, Eddie Reese Watch your mouth. You, you softening baby shit. Watch your mouth. I'll come over stop there. Stop running from me. Stop running watch from Deontay. Mouth. Man the fuck up and fight somebody with a heartbeat, bro. Shut up. But Daniel, du Daniel Dubois has got to stop this. We can't have it, Daniel. <laughs> Tell him, you're not going to let him do this, Daniel. Daniel, anything to say? Not, oh, not, yeah. not right now, <laughs> but we're going to keep things moving. Thank you very much, Jarrell Miller. Um, and you're welcome. Joshua. We're, we're going to start talking about your face.
him quite a long time ago now when he was boxing on Sal and Nordic Fight Nights. I remember having a conversation with Joey Gamash about him.